Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Planescape Torment. All right, there's one more uh, sensory stone to take a look at, and then we'll talk to Quell. Let's see. Oh, hello. What goodies do you... Oh. Seriously, game? There's literally one container in this entire room, and there is nothing in it. Why? Why? I mean, seriously. That's something that, that that bugs me about these games, is that, you know, I mean, you, there's, there, you'll go through the streets, and there's boxes everywhere. Most of them you can't interact with. Every once in a while, there is one that you can open. And half the time, there's nothing in them. Why? <sighs> Whatever. The base of this aquatic blue stone has been sculpted, so it appears to have melted into the pedestal it rests upon. A stream of perfect azure tears drip down the sides, framing the inscription beneath the pedestal. Longing. Alright, let's begin the sensation. As you place your hands upon the stone, its surface ripples beneath your touch. A chill washes over your arms, like plunging your hands into a mountain stream. Close your eyes, submerge into the experience. As you close your eyes, you blink and reopen them. Your eyes are brimming with tears, and you are overcome with the terrible sensation of drowning. As the sensation rolls through you, there is a stirring in your breast, a hunger, poisonous like a serpent, biting into your heart until you feel as if your breast will explode. You want desperately to steady yourself, focus, but all that comes to your eyes is tears. Wipe away the tears. You raise your hand to wipe away your tears. Your hands are soft, delicate women's hand, woman's hands. They brush the stray tears away from your cheek, and you cup them in your hands, each of the tears like jewels shimmering in the lights. Turn to examine the lights. The lights are cast by candle globes that drift through your sanctuary. They have come to this place to gather your thought. You, oh, you have come to your place to gather your thoughts, to reflect on the past with an eye towards the future, to cleanse the mind before the coming journey. Yet, you cannot concentrate. Your thoughts remain in the present, trapped there by the terrible feeling that writhes in your breast. What did he mean? Close your eyes, sigh. You close your eyes, but your words echo, but his words echo in your mind a hundred, a thousand times. Will he ever return? The sound is a whisper, an echo. Only you, only you. Yet you hesitated at the brink of time's door when he must have thought you afraid to go. But you were not, you were afraid to stay, and the fear, the serpent writhes in your breast again, its fangs biting into your heart, filling it to bursting with its poison. The tears come again, running down your cheeks in streams, his words echoing. Echo, only you, only you. Your eyes snap open. It is his voice. You whirl and you gasp. He stands, powerful in the shadows. And he strides into the light of the drifting, candled globes. And you feel the serpent writhing and dying. He returned, his, voice, his face stern. But somewhere in those features, you can almost see his pleasure at seeing you. After all, he returned for you. Echo, only you can help me, Dayanara. But it was wrong for me to ask you for your help. You speak, Deonara. Y yet you, it, it is you, gray-skinned like a statue, striding from the light. Are you that scarred? Your body looks like it has been bathed in knife blades. The wounds, the tattoos, horrible, yet you see through Deonara's eyes, and she sees... How can she see you in such a way? She puts a cloak over your features. She sees you in such light, such terrible longing, light. For she... how... can she feel such? Try to refocus, brace yourself, hold on to the experience. You feel your vision tear... Uh, tearing or tearing? Doubling... A, uh, oh, tearing, I guess that is tearing. Doubling until you are... That man striding from the light. It is you, but not you. You feel yourself being torn. It is Deonara's experience, but at the same time it is also yours. And you... what? Echo. I ask too much of your... Of you to accompany me, Deonara. I have no right to place you in such danger for my sake. It is your words, but they are a surgeon's words, chosen with cold skill, without a trace of emotion. With every word, you feel yourself sneering inside, knowing what the stricken girl will see next through your longing stained eye, through her longing stained eyes. And who? Are you that person, that man twisting her with your words, not knowing how powerful they are to her, like bolts from a ballista, piercing her breast, her 
yet she sees only relief at your return. How, how can she feel and not know you mean to? Echo, I've come to ask your forgiveness, Dayanara. I shall return to you as soon as I am able. Your vision tear, tears again, doubling and bleeding until you are facing yourself again, trying desperately to speak, to warn Dayanara that this is not a man, but a creature that kills for his own needs. He doesn't care about you, Dayanara. You are a tool to him, a tool he needs to... But Dayanara speaks and you can't stop her. Echo, I would place myself in a thousand dangers, embrace eternity for you, my love. I am not afraid. Listen to me. I will accompany you, through the plains though the plains themselves should bar. Though the plains themselves should bar the way, you feel yourself shattering. Relief and satisfaction. His satis his satisfaction at her words, knowing she would say them, always knowing. And her admission of love is like the slamming of a portcullis across your heart. Trapped, she is yours, but you must be certain. So you drive the nail home. Echo. The way is dangerous. You will have to be strong. Far stronger than you are now. Swimming through her mind. Relief. The wave of relief. The end of longing. Yet longing for her... For him more than... That. Yet longing for him more at his words. Not noticing his manipulations. All you need to be is strong. And his path shall be as one with, your, with yours. Your thoughts are like fires. But you can be strong. Stronger than he knows. You know no fear. You would die for him. Echo. I can be strong, my love, I will. Her words slide off of him like water. The serpent in her breast, the one piercing her heart with its poison, has been replaced by this serpent in the flesh. She sees nothing of this, but his next words are planned, carefully, so carefully. Echo. I can't say if we'll succeed, Dayanara, but I'll do my best to protect you, and I will expect nothing less of the same from you. You... You may be required to take to make some sacrifices. At that final terrible word, you feel yourself being torn apart. He means her harm. He means you harm, for you are her. And it, and he, he means to hurt her. Yet you need her to be harmed, and you want to scream. Scream at her that she is in danger. Run, run, Dayanara, for his eyes unmake all things, and... Of course, my love, love is sacri life is sacrifice. This I have learned. You, she, her, you speak the words, and in it you feel yourself dying inside. You are a spectator. And you, s and you have watched a woman die, for the words are a death sentence. Yet still, still she speaks, unheeding, ca uncaring. Echo. I left a legacy in my father's keeping, my love. Ask for the sixth, the third, the key and the S. In it, I bequeath everything to you. It's not much, but with it I left... Oh, the K and the S. Updated my journal. 2,000 experience points. You, him, a wave of irritation washes over you. You clench your teeth to prevent the irritation from crossing your features. Must she always continue to prattle even when you do not prompt her? Must she... But no. No, keep the irritation inside. Only a trace slips out. Come now, I cannot die, Dayanara. There is no need for such foolishness. Her, you, she is overcome with fear. Fear that revolts you, and the fear wells up inside her. You, as you... Watch him frown. And you hasten to correct him. He must know the, the reasons and know the wisdom behind them so he is impressed with your planning. Speak, speak, before he turns away. Echo. I know I often act foolishly, my love, but you said yourself that you can forget things if you are badly hurt. These are things in the legacy that could help you remember should you forget yourself. Updated my journal. 2,000 experience points. She, you coldly regard her through your eyes, tracing your gaze along her furrowed brow. Wrinkling with worry, desperation, she has acted as you expected, yet there is something in what she says. Perhaps, yet I hope nothing in this legacy is of value. I do not want you to leave anything he anything's here in some safe that could be of some use on our journey. Her illusion is shattered just for a moment. You watch silent as the emotion falls to the ground, splintering like silvered glass. Of some use, such a casual statement, yet Dayanara sees, and you hope, just for a moment, you hope that she sees him for what she is. The serpent. The serpent. A lathe crawled over? And your hope dies, as in Dayanara's eyes, the emotion is rebuilt. The, sil the slivers begin being drawn from the ground, the illusion rebuilt. But the slight sliver of pain remains. He thinks you have done something foolish, yet you did it for him. You must must make amends, but how? 
You must convince him the legacy is unimportant. But it isn't. It isn't. It's everything. The legacy, my love. It, it just has a few things to help you remember. The scythe of words falls upon Deonara. So quick, so sharp, you cannot follow its arcing path. A legacy? The things you do, Deonara. Such romantic gestures. No matter. No, she, you, Deonara, you have driven him away again, like you did the night before. You feel the serpent stirring again, reborn, curling around your heart. There's the softest of hisses, yet he does not hear. Would would you wish to leave a legacy, my love, for yourself or for anyone you would want to? It might help you remember if you left something for yourself or for the ones you loved. The word scythe fares, falls again, terrible and swift, yet this time the illusion holds and the serpent is cloaked. The serpent is cunning, and it shall not reveal itself until it strikes. Echo. A legacy for myself? Not likely. The things I would leave for myself would n not be safe in some advocate's office, Deonara. But enough of this. I must leave. He is leaving. You must make him remain. And their experience swirls around you, terrible, and the spiraling toward the final scene. The question you, she, wants to ask. Don't ask it, Deonara. Don't ask it. Be silent. Be silent. Silent. Echo, my love, before you go. His anger, his irritation, what now, girl? What now, you mewling banshee? Before I go? It looks like I am in no danger of that. Come, Deonara. I can't these questions wait for the morn? There is much. She, you, she is desperate, drowning to say it. Say it, say it. And she, you, speak it. Do you want me to come with you, my love? The rush of emotion dies in your mind. This is the end. The words he, you, are about to speak are true. But the truth is not the truth she sees. There are no lies, only cold calculations. Of course he wants you to come with him, Deonara. You understand it clearly, too clearly. He has invested too much in the poor girl to let her go. Of course, Deonara. I would not have, I would not have asked you to come with me if I did not want your company. You know how I feel about you. There's a cold silence in his mind, then a hissing of a thought. A response, sharp and deadly like a dagger blade. The lie comes swiftly, unburdened by emotion. I love you, Deonara. And you want to scream as you feel the lie wash over her like a radiance. But it is his shadow of truth. A serpent's kiss, and he means you harm. And she can see you want to call out, but she is crying with joy, even as, even as. Cry with joy, with frustration, with joy, with despair. The emotion washes over you like you are drowning, drowning, and you need to speak. You long to speak, but you cannot, and... tear yourself away from the experience. And you scream. Scream as you tear your hands from the stone. Bloody tears rushing from your eyes, running in streams down your arms, your hands, to coat the stone. Blood. Her blood. And you can't warn her. And you can't stop crying. And suddenly Fall from Grace is there, and her touch is gentle like silk, and she brushes the tears from your eyes, even as you feel the, the screams welling up within you. She shs you. She shushes you. Sh just shush. Cradling your face through the, your bloody tears. I, I I can't bear it. I I couldn't stop her. I wanted to, but I couldn't do anything. Fall from Grace looks into your eyes and she nods sadly in understanding. And that is the nature of longing, the desire for that which you cannot change or possess. She studies you, withdrawing her hand, now soaked in your blood. Will you be all right? Yes, yes. I just need a moment. Very well. Fall from Grace steps back. We will continue when you are ready. Take a breath, try and collect your thoughts. And another 2,000 experience points. Can I... How may I help? Can I talk to her? Yes. Nope, apparently not. Alrighty, well, uh, let me, uh, let me go double-check this one last time just to see if something changed that caused an item to appear. Probably not. Nope. Alright, then I'll talk to you. This older man is chewing on something, muttering softly to himself. After a moment, there is a crack as he crunches down on the object in his mouth and swallows it. His bushy, brassy, white eyebrows furrow for a moment, rise, and then furrow again. Hmm. Greetings! Without so much as looking at you, the man reaches into his tunic, pulls out a puce-colored ball, regards it curiously for a moment, then pops it into his mouth. Mouth. Uh, I said greetings. 
The man frowns and waves you away, then nods to himself thoughtfully as he savors the flavor of whatever he's put into his mouth. Uh, I, I've, I've got some questions. The man smirks, bites his thumb at you, then abruptly pauses. His cheeks swell, and with a violent gag, he split, spits up a large black fly, which begins to buzz around the chamber. Minorossian candies be damned, he cries, shaking his fist at the insect. He whirls on you. What? I had questions about you. He pops a small red candy into his mouth. Do you always traipse about molesting puissant mages with your ignorant prattle? Babbling, blathering, chittering, chattering. The candy shoots from his mouth on chattering, flying in a high arc to land on the floor with a wet plip. He stares at it sadly. My question? It was so tasty, too, he mules. He suddenly looks up, snarling. Sorry, as you should be, piking dung beetle. Mages deserve respect, and bashers like you should know their proper place. He begins to jump up and down. Proper place, proper place. Calm down, I only meant to ask you, mean to ask you some questions. Snatch up the mage's candy and eat it. Seems unreasonable. I care not, you yeasty beef-witted pig nut. His eyes bulge out as he jabs his finger at you. Now off with you, off with you! And do not return without being prepared to show me the proper respect. Come bearing tribute, a gift! He suddenly draws close and whispers from one side of his mouth. Candies or chocolate would be nice, but nothing common, mind you. Bring something exotic. Now be gone! Wait, I've got this imported chocolate. I could give it to you as a gift. Fine, I'll look around the ward for something suitable then. Well, apparently this is what the chocolate closet is for. Oh, his demeanor changes in, a, in an instant. Very kind of you, very gentlemanly. May I see it? Show him the chocolate closet. Actually, no. Lost item, 8,000 experience points. He takes it from your hands. Oh, quite rare these are, and most delectable. He bites off a large piece and tucks what's left into his tunic. I had some questions. He frowns at you, licking the last of the chocolate off his fingers. Who told you to bother me with this... With inane questions, he stares at you accusingly. Come now, what is it that you wish to bother me with? Or be gone! He fi fishes a malt ball from his sleeve and eats it. May I have some candy? Mm. Who are you? I am Quell. He holds up his hand imperiously, as if to stop you from introducing yourself. And don't bother to introduce yourself. You must be the most insolent, annoying pest this side of Sigil that I've heard so much about. A true pleasure to meet you, and thank the power and thank the powers I couldn't have waited until you had curled up and died, thereby sparing me the pain of being forced to banter words with you. I would gladly trade my formidable sorceress powers for but a minor enchantment that would pierce the, your thick skull and introduce at least the idea of manners. Manners? What about that chocolate I brought you? He opens his mouth to speak, ra finger raised, then stops. Hmm. You have me there, sir. He shrugs and eats another candy. As I thought. I had other questions. Uh, can you tell me about this place? You stand within the physic... Th uh, physic? Uh, civic fest hall. In the exclusive. So very exclusive until you shambled in. Private sensorium. Speak to the man at the fest hall's foyer. Splinter. Should you have any more fatuous questions about the place? Let me ask you about something else. Uh, what do you know of Ravel Puzzlewell? At the mention of her name, he swallows the candy he's sucking on with a loud gulp, wincing in pain. What to tell? Why tell at all? Such things, such tales are best left in dusty books and in the attics of old men's minds. Evil, evil, such a name, such a name. And such dark tales swarm about it, like flies on a corpse. Just the same, I need you to tell me. He rolls his eyes, plopping another candy into his mouth. She's a night hag, my boy, who came to Sigil. All evil and cackles she was, alive with her shadow magic, ready to butt heads with the Lady of Pain. Barmy, barmy old hag, only succeeded in getting herself mazed. She's likely dead by now. Shadow magic? Oh, her shadow magic, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. He seems uneasy about speaking of her. Ravel dabbled, no, not dabbled, but excelled in all schools of magic. She knew shadow magics, magics of illusion and shadow substance. Shadows, residues of dead things. How might I find her? Why, why would you ask such a thing? Are you mad? What could you possibly want with such an evil creature? She knows something about my past. Doubtful. She was mazed many centuries ago. Gone, penned in the dead book she is. And even if she were somehow, somehow still clutching to life with her blackened, bloody talons, what could she possibly know about you? 
if she wasn't the spitting image of cackling evil, that is, and was even willing to help you, I'll just have to hope she's alive and will help me. By Lesh's six teats and her swollen tummy, what a flicky, flickering candle of hope hurled into the howling winds of pandemonium, that is. Flicker, flicker, whoosh. Don't be any more the fool than you need to be. I must still seek her out, whether she's dead or alive. So if she's dead, as she most likely is, then what is your plan, may I ask? You have everything all figured out, do you? Quell, mu Quell is just blowing words out of his pits. None the nonsense. Nothing. What do you plan to do if she's in the dead book? Eh? I don't know. I'll figure something out. What do you think I should do? The first brilliant question you've asked. Me? I think you should give up this clueless idea of entering mazes and chatting with the, with night hags and hope and lope back to whatever crypt you crawled out of. Makes far more sense than fishing for the lady's anger, it does. Can you tell me how to get to her maze? Lunatic! Madman! Adelcove! Have you not listened to a word I've said? She's imprisoned in an interdimensional maze for trying the, to best the Lady of Pain. That means she's at least ten times as balmy as you. And at least a hundred times more powerful. She's also most likely dead. Dead. Dead thrice dead and, if by some happenstance she isn't, she'll make you dead. I understand, but I really need your help. Can you tell me how to reach her or not? Quell goes silent, chewing on his lip. After a moment, he fishes around in his tunic for a mint, then plops it into his mouth. You serious? Serious now? Why so serious? So balor bent, bator bent, so mule stubborn, he sighs. Well, born clueless, die clueless. Yes? Updated my journal. All mazes have portals, this much I know to be true. A way in, a way out. This is how the Lady of Pain fashion the Lady fashions him. I do not know the portal, its location or even its form, but I am told its key is a piece of rabble. A piece of rabble? But if rabble is mazed, then how am I supposed to Then you'll ju then you'll have to make do. Find something that has rabble's taint in it, mayhap. That is all I know. All bother me no more about it. If you want to, to go pestering someone about something like that, go to the brothel of slating, slaking intellectual lust. One of the ladies there is bound to have s met someone or know something about it. Updated my journal. I had some other questions. Uh, may I have some candy? A candy? And what's more, for good measure, a candy? What, pray tell, makes you think I'd give a candy to a shirtless impertinent pulpion such as yourself? Hmm? He taps his foot, arms crossed, waiting for your answer. Would you sell some, then? Now that, that I might, but I would warn you, I sell no ordinary candies, but chocolates of power. He draws his last word out, rubbing his hands together greedily. Chocolates of power? He nods. Indeed, they are not cheap, mind you, so should you find yourself short of jink, I suggest you drop the subject immediately. Would you like to see what I have to offer, hmm? He cocks his head, looking at you slyly. Yes. Updated my journal. Oh. Blessed candy, holy candy, mechanist candy, crunchy candy, frosty mint candy, quivering candy, minerosian chocolate, lucky candy, a stinky can, a stinky chocolate. Fascinating, fascinating, Captain. Uh, bless. Protection from evil. Call lightning. Armor. Oh, crunchity candy. Hmm, my mistake. Friends. Strength. Swarm Curse. Swarm Curse isn't bad. Lucky Candy Luck. And Cloud Kill. Wow, Cloud Kill. No wonder that's 375. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I guess I'm okay. Maybe we'll buy some later. Alright, so let's see. Um, still don't have proof about... Uh, Kisiceris. But...
I'm guessing that when we prove it to her, that'll give us the element we need to um, get into, you know, activate the portal. Um, yeah, find the portal key to Robble's maze. Let's see. Um. Oh, a scholar or a linguist. <coughs> I see. All right. That I think we can do. Uh, I think it was there. No, that's the... Uh, let's go here. Then we'll go back to the... Oh, hello. A shadow! I think this is the first shadow that we've that right. we've uh, encountered, despite telling someone that uh, they keep attacking us. Uh, Finham the linguist. Finham glances your way, frowning. Chosen to grace my home once more, have you? What is it you wish of me this time? I had some questions. I would have you know that I'm a scholar and a linguist, sir. While I shall happily entertain any questions regarding my field of study, language, and the like, I can be of no help to you in other matters. Unfold the dodecahedron to a page with writing on it and ask if he can translate it. He takes the unfolded dodecahedron in his hands and examines it closely. This language is a long dead one. Known to virtually no one. I believe my father, a linguist like myself, knew this language and may well have been the one, the only man in Sigil at the time that could understand it. I recognize it from his notes, but I cannot translate it. Do you have these notes still? Venom shakes his head. I'll be of no use to you if you're looking to translate anything. And the few actual books he had pertaining to that language disappeared around the time of his murder, I believe. Wait, your father was murdered? Finham nods. Strangled he was. He had left a, t left a tutor someone. He taught various languages to supplement his research income. And was discovered dead in a side chamber of the Civic Fest Hall. The killer was never found. This was, oh, perhaps fifty years ago now. I was but a child. He knew the language, though, and could teach it? Surely he did, and could were he alive today. My father was said to be a great teacher. Finham nods sadly. I have his skill with knowledge, but... Not his patience for others, sadly. Is he interred at the mortuary? Updated my journal. Why, no, his ashes are kept here. He points it to a bronze urn sitting atop a cabinet beside a bouquet of purple flowers. Why? A wry smile crosses Finham's lips. A necroscope, are you? Speak with the dead? He suddenly frowns. I have no wish to speak of these things any longer. You'll have to excuse me, sir. Farewell. Farewell, Finham. I'm gone. Let's see, anything else? I'd very much like to see them just the same. Finham gives an annoyed sigh. I'm not certain where they are just now, and I'm looking for something else at the moment. My research journal. Perhaps when I've recovered it, I could spare the time to find those notes for you. Uh, is it this book right here? Updated my journal. Yeah, there we go. Gained item, lost item. 25,000 experience points. Venom's eyebrows arch. Why, yes it is! He takes it from you, then begins to rummage through his pockets. Here you are then, my father's- You just keep your father's notes on you? Wow. Square then, are we? Good. I have to look over my notes now, so if you'll excuse me. Thanks, Finham. Fair I feel stronger. Perfect. Uh, first of all, Finn and Lay's notes. These are the notes of the deceased linguist Finn and Lay. They are composed in, of his research into the language of the Uyo. Level up. Uh, one characteristic point gained. Ten hit points gained. 
Uh, what do I want? I want more intelligence, I think. All right, let's see. Uh, let's just quick save. Let's go ahead and use this. These are the, are the notes of the deceased linguist Finn Andley. They are composed of his research into the language of the Uyo, which seems remarkably similar to the writing you found hidden in the dodecahedron puzzle box. Read the, over them carefully. See if it sparks a memory. Updated my journal. As you read over Finn and Lee's notes regarding the lost language of the Uyo, there is a throbbing sensation in your temples as a memory begins to surface. Memories of this language. You recall letters, words, phrases, until, like a spire wind blowing away the blanket of poisonous smog over the great foundry, the language is once more revealed to you in its entirety. You should be able to read the writing in the dodecahedron now. I did not actually get experience points for that. Interesting. Uh, let's put it away, actually. Let's go uh, see if we can learn some magic. Yeah, let's have a little total, eh? I want to do that before I gain any more experience points. That's the lower ward, I believe. Done. Can you train me in the art, Sebastian? Yes. This is not something I normally do. Unusable item placed in backpack, unusable item placed in backpack, unusable item placed in backpack. However, show me what you know and I'll give you some pointers. He watches as watches you carefully as you demonstrate what you know. At several points, he stops you and shows you ways to improve upon your skills. Within a few hours' time, you think you feel comfortable with your abilities as a mage. Thank you, Sebastian. 5,000 experience points. You're a most welcome friend. Take these two spells as well. They may come in handy. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have work to do. I feel stronger. Achievement unlocked. Call of the Art. Uh, so what I actually got... Oh, my punch daggers did. Uh, he gave me a scroll of armor and chromatic orb. I also lost the tattoo of greater warding. Armor class is up to five. So I can no longer use the punch daggers of Morin. Character's too far away. All right. We'll have to look around for uh, items that I can actually use. All right. So I am a level one wizard. Let's go ahead and level up. Uh, two hit points. Two hit points gained. Really? I shouldn't gain any hit points. Kind of weird. Um, huh. I don't know. Alrighty, well, I guess we're using uh, a dagger now. I'll have to go back and get... Uh, Get some other tattoos. I'm gone. Uh, let's see. Can you use this? You can. Excellent. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, don't care about that. I'll have to go back and look at my uh, weapon uh, assortment, see if I can learn any of those. 
All right, so copy that. Copy that. There we go. Uh, now let's go ahead and use the dodecahedron. Unfold the dodecahedron and read it. My journal. Ten thousand experience points. This is why. This is why I uh, decided to do this now. Uh, the tablet turns out to be a journal of sorts, one kept by some prior incarnation of yourself, it would seem, and not an altogether sane one, either. There are only a handful of completely coherent uh, sections. Let's browse through it. What do you wish to read about? Um, whispering shadows, a female ghost hiding something within your own body. Uh, well, we already know about that. Uh, cursed tattoos, paranoid ranting, dreams about dreams and ravel. Uh, the danger of names, the killing in the fest hall, the murder of the one who tried to help you, cryptic answer from an unknown source, something about a legacy. Whispering shadows. The whispers are not the shadows moving, they are speaking, plotting, talking to each other. I can understand some of what they say. Female ghost. The book tells me things, whispers things. It tells me to avoid the ghost girl, avoid her. I do not know her and she torments me. Uh, something within your body. And so I swallowed it, hoping I'd it catch in my bowels. I can make someone remove it when I need to. I assume that's the, uh... The ring. Uh, paranoid ranting. I have learned that my life is not my own. I will not allow you to have my life. You will have to pull my life from my broken body if you want it. It's you who will die if I cannot have it, neither will you. You are responsible for this treason of flesh. You will not live to live my life. Uh, read about the accursed tattoos. The accursed tattoos will not leave my skin. I have tried to burn them off my skin. Failed, failed. I try to cloak myself. But I always feel that people are reading my flesh. Reading me like a book. Whenever they look at me, I want to tear their eyes out. Pluck them from their sockets and crush them beneath my heel. Uh, dreams and Ravel. Why can't I dream? I used the Goblet of Samir to force a waking dream. I saw a hag. She tempted me, threatened me with shadows. I have never seen her, but she came when I dreamt. I must not dream again. I must always be aware. I, dro I destroyed the Goblet. She says she is someone of power, that she will have me, will find me. Get away, hag. Stay far away from me. Leave me in peace. I want nothing to do with you. Continue reading this portion of the journal. Voice reeks of evil's talons, talons like spiders. They burrowed into my gray matter, and I needed her out of my mind. Out, out, hag! Out, out, damn spot. She was a myth, a fairy tale, who alone challenged the Lady of Pain. How can one fight someone who is a myth? I don't have the weapons. I need weapons that will kill her should she find me. I need a strategy so she cannot dis defeat me when she comes for me. I must devise and think. I shall beat her. Um, uh, about the danger of names. Fear names. Names of power and identity. Names can be used as weapons by others. They are a hook that can be used to track you, find you, hunt you across the plains. Remain nameless and you shall be safe. Something else. Uh, killing in the fest hall. I went to the fest hall looking for the path of my false self in its halls. So glaring it was that those I did not know, the false ones, welcomed me into their con their confidence, treated me as a friend, showed me to my room, attended to my needs. I had to restrain myself from launching out against them. That would have been premature. First, I need to protect my identity. I found one who knew the exclusive language of the Uyo, learned it as I could, then killed him. Then I went to the sensorium and prepared to end the matter soon, soon. Read about the murder of the one who tried to help you. There is nothing he can do. Memories are gone, he says, never to return. He says lies and tells me this is what he told me. Lies, he says my mind is weakening from every death. Lies, he sat there betraying my confidence with every turn. He said that only after three more deaths, three more lives, will I gain the benefit of keeping my memories, but that I, myself, I will die when I die. Die! How can one be immortal and still die? He could not answer, so he was of no use. I butchered him so that no other incarnation will ever benefit from his uselessness. 
And I think that's... Oh, nope. Uh, cryptic answer... Oh, there's yeah, there's two more. Cryptic answer from an unknown source. So the ghastly head said, You've been divided. You are one of many men. One in many men? You bear many names. Each one has left their scars on your flesh. Lost one, immortal one, incarnation's end, man of a thousand deaths, the one doomed to life. Restless one, one of many, the one whom life holds prisoner, the bringer of shadows, the wounded one, misery bringer, Yemeth. You are the silvered glass that is cracked and the pieces scattered across history. Only one piece is of import. Regain that and your life will be yours again. There will be a price. The price will buy you a chance. Without the chance, you are doomed. You have lost that which was, which is never meant to be separated from man. Your mortality has been stripped from you. Lost, it exists, but you must find it before your mind has lost you as well. And read something about a legacy. A legacy, the note read. Forget not to collect your legacy. And a small code scratched beside it. 51 AA, a trap no doubt set by yet another of my false selves. I'll see it destroyed, I will. Alright, that is about it. I feel stronger. Of course I do. Level up. All right, we're pretty close to getting to level four as well. All right, I'm going to spend a little bit of time running back to... Um, I think that's... Yeah, I'm over time. Of course I am. Uh, I need to run back to the uh, fest hall, grab some scrolls, and scribe them. And uh, then we will... I don't know what we'll do. Um... Oh, uh, we need to go check with the uh, uh, advocate, Deonara's father, see if we can get that legacy. Um, that will be next time. See you then, everyone.